Hey guys, Ivan here, and first thing we're gonna watch in this video is a beautiful posing routine of Chan Kang, and he was fifth at the Mr. Olympia back in 2019. He was beaten by George Peterson and Keon Pearson, who moved to 212, and also by Brian Ainsley and uh, Chris Bumstead. So he was fifth, and he was kind of one of the favorites to actually challenge uh, Chris Bumstead after Brian Ainsley and the other guys, but he didn't show up at the Mr. Olympia last year. I think he wasn't able to travel because of the restrictions, because he's from China and there was a visa issue, so he wasn't able to travel to US and that's why he didn't compete. This year, however, I don't know what's gonna happen. Here he is at the Amateur Mr. Olympia in China, a guest posing and he looks great. Like Those Chinese guys, they all have really uh, clean lines. He looks so polished, even in the off-season, even in a guest posing. And just take a look at this posing routine of his. He's a good poser as well. Like, this is a really good posing routine. So the first thing that came to my mind when I saw his physique in these photos, in the videos, you're gonna see some photos as well, was that his legs are huge and that he should maybe consider moving to 212. But then, after watching this posing routine and seeing how classic this guy is, what kind of aesthetics he has and abdominal control as well, it would be a waste if he moved to bodybuilding, 212 bodybuilding, whatever, not classic physique. He is meant for classic for sure. Look at the vacuum, how deep it is. And he does this from the side vacuum that Chris Bumstead does as well. So he's showing off his strong points in classic physique. And now he's wearing classic shorts here. So yeah, he's going to be doing classic for sure. I mean, he's definitely meant for that division. Even though his legs are really the, the most impressive body part on his physique, he should probably take it easy with them, because this is classic, I mean, he looks kind of like uh, freaking Tom Platts. Um, yeah, it does flow pretty well, especially when he tilts his body like this, but still, those quads are definitely overpowering and they are throwing off his balance a little. I mean, sure, it's his personal choice, if he wants to have a really dominant, really impressive body part, that's cool, that's his choice, that's nice. But there's, for example, Flex Lewis, who was really genetically blessed with great legs, but he didn't want to push them too hard because he didn't want to ruin the, the balance, the symmetry. So he worked his upper body harder and took it easy, a little bit easier with the legs. And he was even doing the open, and this is classic. So yeah, his physique does flow really well. It's, it's, it's amazing, really. Look at the biceps here and the, the symmetry, the, the lats, the V-taper. It's just a really beautiful physique. He has those clean, clean lines, super clean lines. And I would definitely love to see him back on stage in classic physique. Hopefully he'll manage to travel over there and to compete against the other top classic physique guys. I can definitely see him cracking the top three. Yeah, beating either Terence Ruffin or Brion Ainsley. I don't see him beating Chris Bumstead. I don't think that's really a possibility right now. The way Chris looked was just a whole different level. But he does have a really good potential for classic physique. I mean, when I say potential, I mean potential to actually win the Mr. Olympia one day when Chris retires or when Chris comes off for whatever reason, so he can, you know, sneak into that top top spot. I can definitely see this guy being the runner-up, you know, being right there behind Chris Bumstead. So hopefully he will manage to get to US and compete over there because he looks absolutely outstanding and right now he does look really freaking impressive. Alright, so since we are talking about the legs, let's check out what the legs of Ian Valier are looking right now. And those striations are actually pretty deep. I mean, he started his prep only recently and he's in great shape right now. And huge! I mean, he's really big. Like, this guy is one of the biggest size monsters right now in the IBB. And he's not taking his foot off the gas pedal. Every offseason he's pushing it to the max. He's always trying to grow and to improve. And not, right now his legs are looking absolutely sick. So last year we saw him at the New York Pro, then at the Mr. Olympia. He was good, he was great. And then I compared him to Nick Walker. And it seems like Nick Walker is a little bit better. His New York Pro version. But we'll see what Ian is gonna look at his show. I think he plans on doing Toronto Pro. But whichever show he decides to do, uh, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be the winner of it. He was 7th at the Mr. Olympia, guys. And he, I'm sure he improved in the offseason, because I know how hard he worked. Uh, I've been listening to him in a podcast, Fuad's podcast, uh, every single week. So I know how focused, how driven he is. And you can see it right here. I mean, the results are right there. Like, his legs grew and they are looking so conditioned for, 
how many weeks out i mean chicago pro is in like 10 weeks and he's not doing chicago he's doing some later shows so maybe like 12 13 15 weeks i'm not sure but there is a lot of time a lot of time for him to get shredded so he's gonna probably kind of grow into the show he doesn't need to push it too hard with with low with low calories i don't think he's gonna lose much size because he's already like two weeks out <laughs> something like that i mean based on this photo right here so he can just try to maintain this body fat percent and, you know, add more food, add more food. And he's probably gonna grow into the show. And when he adds certain substances that are actually included in the last final weeks of the prep, he's gonna just look so much more impressive. So <laughs> it's gonna be a good year for Ian Valier. I don't know what can I expect. I mean, he was seventh last year. How many places can he jump in one year? Can he win the Mr. Olympia? <laughs> With that structure, I don't think so, but... With so much size and great conditioning, I don't think it's entirely impossible. Stranger things have happened. So we'll see what that's gonna look like, but right now, uh, at about 15 or how many weeks out, he looks absolutely outstanding. Really conditioned and really freaking big. But is he as big as Sergio Oliva is? I don't think so. Ian, he goes to like 290, maybe 300 in the offseason, the full-blown offseason. And he's competing at around 255. That was the case last year. And the Sergio Oliva, last time he competed, he was 285, if I, remember, if I remember correctly. And right now, 10 weeks out, he's over 300 pounds. So I asked him actually a question in the comment section. Is he going to be bigger at this show than he was at his last show? He says, yes, every year he's bigger than the previous show. So he's filling out his frame slowly, but there is still a lot of filling out to be done because... He's gonna be competing against Akeem Williams. He was able to beat uh, Akeem last year. He had probably better back, he was maybe a little bit sharper, and he does have like a wider frame. He's a little bit taller, maybe. Uh, he's got the angle here, but yeah, I think uh, Sergio is 5 foot 11, so he's kind of tall. Google says 6 foot, but I actually heard him say that he's 5'11, uh, so that's pretty tall for a bodybuilder, that's why he weighs so much. But that's why it's so hard for him to look really thick because he needs a lot more mass. And Akeem, yeah, he wasn't better at this show, but this was not the version that we saw at Mr. Olympia or Chicago Pro last year. He improved so much. I mean, take a look at this. This is really conditioned, and with his size, with so much mass that he's packing on that frame, it's gonna be hard to beat Akeem. I have Akeem winning this show, uh, Chicago Pro, easily. Or Hunter, I don't see Sergio actually doing that, no. I know he's gonna improve, yeah, but I just, with his frame, I mean, he needs a lot more feeling out to do. If the, guys, if the other guys bring conditioning, they will beat him, because they just have more, more mass on their frames. I mean, they're just thicker. Sergio also, his arms are big, but he doesn't really have great bicep peaks. His waist also kind of looks weird, a little bit thicker down there. So, uh, lads are also pretty pretty high, and the chest looks really flat when he lifts his arms up in, in, the, front, in the front double bicep. So, there are, there are weaknesses. I mean, everybody has weaknesses, for sure. But compared to Akeem and, and Hunter, I don't see him beating those two guys. I could be wrong. You tell me, guys, what do you think, but that's just my prediction for this year's Chicago Pro. So, I showed you this photo briefly, and yeah, let's take a look at it for a little bit longer. This is Hunter Labrada, and I mean, come on. Come on, he is a bodybuilder's bodybuilder. Like he has all it takes, really. He is genetically so freaking blessed. He has great shape, he has so much muscle, he can get conditioned. Also, you know how driven he is, how much he's working in the off-season. I mean, I'm not saying that Sergio isn't working as hard in the off-season, but we don't really know that, because Hunter is posting a lot of stuff, Sergio is not posting anything, so we don't know how much work did actually Sergio put in the off-season. But we know that Hunter did, and so I can. I, if I was a batting man, it would be a safer bet because I know he definitely made progress. He's getting stronger all the time. He's pushing some crazy weights, and you can see all the effort that he's putting in. Also, his meals. He's showing that to us as well, and you can just listen to him talk. You can see. You can, you can feel the drive that he has. So he's definitely going to be improved. And he was eight at the Mister Olympia, guys. I mean. Sergio never achieved anything like that. I mean, that ranked Hunter as 8th best bodybuilder in the world. You can argue that Sergio with his 2020 Arnold Classic physique could have placed, you know, higher than that. But we don't know that. 
Right now, we have Hunter as 8th best bodybuilder in the world, Akeem Williams as 6th best bodybuilder in the world, and Sergio, we'll see where he fits uh, at this year's Mr. Olympia if he actually if he qualifies or if he beats these two guys. But based on what I see and based on their previous performance and everything considered, I think it will be the safest bet to bet on Hunter or Akeem rather than on Sergio. But you guys tell me. Anyways, uh, Hunter right here at 10 weeks out looks absolutely amazing. Also very, very lean. He's like also 2-3 weeks out. Really, he can get shredded in 2-3 in weeks if he really... Uh, if he nailed it and if he did the peak week protocol final week so yeah he's very close to his condition i don't think he needs to work much more also just like uh, ian he's gonna be cranking into, into the show so you can expect him to look much better than here and also when he really dehydrates and gets his body fat percent really low that's gonna look like something and i think sergio needs to diet uh, a little bit longer than these guys so these guys i mean hunter for example He's already there, basically. He can just, you know, cruise and, and, and add more food and just uh, have his body respond like crazy because it is so... This is the best state the body can be. When you're so lean and you don't have to diet so hard to stay that lean. I know he's eating a lot and he's staying this lean. So it's all about putting a little bit more food, a little bit more food and then just growing it to the show. That's how it's done. And he's doing it the best way possible. Also, he has the best genetics possible. So yeah, we can expect great results for Hunter. Maybe when we win that Chicago Pro and qualify for the Mr. Olympia by winning that show, beating Akeem and Sergio. I can definitely see that happen. You make sure to comment down below in the comment section and tell me what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. All the best and bye-bye.